The Earnestly Speaking Podcast is a show that is founded on free-flowing conversation and may at times venture into mature subjects. Listener discretion is advised. Earnestly Speaking Podcast here. Time to cover, time to uh, preview SummerSlam uh, 2019. They, you know, they don't, I, I miss the days when they put, num- put the, year, the year next to the uh, event. SummerSlam 88, SummerSlam 89, SummerSlam 90. Now it's a SummerSlam. Like, whatever. I'm here with G. G Steely. G Steely. G W Gross. On Twitter, at G Steely. G W S T W L I O. G, what's up, man? Not much, man. What's going on? It took us literally, uh, I would say, 40 minutes just to connect on Skype. Because you suck. Yeah, tell me your computer. You suck, man. You it's suck. time. It's time. It's time. Um, you know, this is actually the, well, this is the first time I think ever on this show I'm actually, like, doing an actual, well, I did a preview last last month of Extreme Rules, but in the eight years I've done this, on, on this podcast, I've never doubled down on wrestling like I have now, like, in terms of, like, current stuff, like, really doubling down and Discussing it like, like, like we're about to do right now today, for example. Like I did the, the, the preview last last month on Extreme Rules, but that was me by myself, and that was kind of like a ten minute little sidebar thingy. I'm actually dedicating an episode now to. Oh, there you go. Summer 2019. The sporting news calls it Summer 2019. That's that's pretty cool. All right, whatever. Anyway, Summer Sam's on Sunday. I'm kind of excited about. It. I like the card. What, 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 what's your thoughts on the cards so far? Like this, this one, the onset. Um, yeah, I'm not surprised by anything. I I, I just want to see how the writers kind of, like, flex it with um the two Canadian girls in there. You got Trish Stratus against Charlotte, and you got uh, Nat against uh Becky Lynch, and yeah. not, nothing yet. That, like, I mean, I'm sure we'll get into it in detail, but you got Becky Lynch, who's probably, like, their top draw, you know, uh, in yeah. an enemy territory, and Charlotte, who's probably their top talent going in enemy territory, so oh, something's got to give over there. Well, I, I mean, I, would you say like in the women's division, like she's probably the, the like Becky would be the biggest baby face of the, all, all the girls, and then like Charlotte would be the biggest heel. I don't, I don't know, man, because Charlotte is the quote unquote bad guy, but it's not like the fans really, really boo her. It's not like it's not like she's getting Baron Corbin kind of heat out there, you know? It's like that, that, the fans boo her because because she, she, she talks shit about all the fans. <laughs> You know, like, I love she Charlotte trashes Flair. wherever she's at. But in the ring, everybody knows if you're a fan that you're not going to get much better than Charlotte Flair. You yeah, know, I, that's funny. And, and, mm-hmm. and, and the fans appreciate that. You know, so what's funny? I mean, before I start watching, what's months ago? You kept telling me, you know, Charlotte's probably the most talented person in the entire company, not male or female. And I'm saying, okay, I, I, I mean, she, definitely a Flair gene there, obviously, Rick, being Ric Flair's daughter, obviously, but she holds her own. And and in watching her in this last two and a half months of watching wrestling again. Like, dude, I can't, I can't agree more with you. Yeah, she, she, she's amazing. She, she, she's a physical specimen, and she's like a great athlete, great on the mic. Phenomenal. And, and, and mic. What I was telling you before is like, even her facial expressions are on point. <laughs> you know, yeah. like you just dumb. Everything she does is just flawless in the ring. You know, and and she can carry the match with anybody of any size. You know, right. the small girls, the big girls. Mm-hmm. Like she's just great with all of them. So okay, well, we'll hit on her in a second. We'll go as we go through the cards and stuff. Um, let's go from the uh, the early, the early. Uh, because there's, there's, there's 10 matches. This is going to be a long show, I think. The way it looks right now, it's going to be a long-ass show. Like WrestleMania-type long. <laughs> so let's go to the court real quick. Uh, the first match I'm assuming here is going to be Drew Gulak against Unique Lork- Lorcan. I have no investment in this match whatsoever. I don't, I don't think I've seen Drew Gulak wrestle more than one time in the three months I've been watching. Who's with championship on the line? Uh, do you have any thoughts on this match? I, I don't have anything to give you on this one, <laughs> honestly. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Good. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's part of like that. That's part of the kickoff show, right? I, I, I would imagine it. that. I would imagine. Yeah. That. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I really don't tune in until like seven o'clock. So, <laughs> like, I, and the, the kickoff show starts like five o'clock, right? Or yeah. Six? Five o'clock. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Like, I, mean, come on. I, I remember back in the day. I, I'm a date myself. Pay per views were uh, WrestleMania was four hours, but pay per views were generally three hours from eight to eleven. You know. And that was it. No, WrestleMania, no, WrestleMania did the same thing, too. WrestleMania was maybe three hours, maybe three and a half hours. It all yeah. stood the same track, 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 listen time anyway. I don't know. This, I'm not in this. I, 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 don't, I get what they're doing. They're trying to expose more talent. And I get that. And you have the network for that. And, and look, they can do that now with the network, you know, because technically, mm-hmm. pay-per-view doesn't start until 7 o'clock anyway. 
the, the click off shows on the network anyway. So technically, it's it's their platform, so they can do that, obviously. But it's just too much is too much. I mean, you you're filling three hours of Raw on Monday, you're filling two hours of uh, SmackDown on, on Tuesday, and soon be Friday. You know, you have NXT obviously on Wednesdays. A lot of time to watch wrestling, and oh, so much, so much, too much to keep up with, in my opinion. Yeah, there's a lot. It's almost like how the NFL did it with Monday Night Football, Thursday Night Football. <laughs> we feel the same way. Night. We're in the same boat. <laughs> We're in the same page that one. We, do, we don't, less is more sometimes. Yep. You know, so I have no opinion on this match because I I, I've never seen one Drew Glock match yet. He, he'll probably win because whatever. Um, Here's one that doesn't, I, it doesn't make any sense at all. And we just got this confirmed on Monday, finally, after, after the rumors all weekend. We got Dolph Ziggler going against Bill Goldberg. Now, we know yeah. Bill Goldberg wants to wipe this thing off the uh, that match against Undertaker back in June at Su- Su- Super Showdown. Um, now, Taker had a chance to, had a chance to, t- to you know, wipe this thing off, um, and he did that Extreme Rules with, it, with the tag match against, uh, you know, Shane and uh, Drew, Drew McIntyre, you know, team up with Roman Reigns. So he was able to, you know, take this thing off of there. Um, so I'm assuming Goldberg wants to do the same thing here. Um the angle they're using here, of course, is Dolph Ziggler, you know, make, you know, calling out all the legends of the of the of the business, uh, Shawn Michaels and who it may be, and, and, and Bill Goldberg, and 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 obviously we know Goldberg was was mentioned in a couple of rants that Ziggler had, but it never made sense for this match to happen. At least in my opinion, and yet we have it. I don't get it. Yeah, and that was a couple. I actually liked the way they promoted it on Monday mm-hmm. um, with Miz V. Uh, and and him and signing the contract without yeah. looking, I, I I just thought it was cool with HBK giving him the kick at the end of the whole show. Mm-hmm. That was fine, you know. It, it, even the hype of Goldberg, everybody kind of already knew where he leaked online yeah. and Twitter, yeah. whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I I don't even know why. I mean, like Goldberg to me was always gonna be a WCW guy. So yeah, I don't feel like WWE owes him anything. <laughs> you know, no, no, no. he's always been a WCW guy. He was always the the the, the ratings rival against Stone Cold. Mm-hmm. You know. So I, I was never a big Goldberg guy. I mean, I like Goldberg, but I was never a big Goldberg I'm guy. I'm and for me, I actually think that uh, I, I was mentioning this to you earlier, I think last week. It's like I'm tired of the predictable run of the heels losing. Like Dolph Ziggler is one of their best athletes that they have in ring talent. You know, he's, he's good on the microphone. He's good as a face. He's better as a heel, you know. But, like, he, he's one of the most talented wrestlers they have in the locker room, which is why part of his gimmick, I think a lot of it rings true, that he was kind of skipped over. So, you know, his, his opportunity did pass. He probably does feel, you know, contempt towards the organization because he is one of the better talents that they've had, and mm-hmm. they never knew what to do with him. They never knew what to do with, with, knew with, never knew what to do with him. So it's like, so now you're going to have him lose to Goldberg, and it's like he's one of your best heels. Like, what are you doing? Because obviously everyone knows Goldberg, as you said, is going to wipe the stink off of that terrible Undertaker match, you know? And and he's, and, and they're probably going to make him beat Dolph Ziggler within five minutes. I don't know. You, 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 may, get good, you may get at least ten minutes on this, on this match. Um, I think Z- Dolph Ziggler has, has just been floundering on the roster. And not only that, um, he's, he's not getting any heat as a heel. He's getting very little heat. Now, this angle they're doing here with, with the Legends angle, HBK and Miz and now Goldberg, He's got some heat, you know. He's got some heat. He's, he's, he's getting some of that heat now that the company wants, but they have to stretch it out and try these these wacky ass storylines to, to get heat on them. I'm starting to think that maybe a change of scenery is, is, is in the card room. Maybe him going to AEW may help him out. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, the, the thing is about him, he, like he does take hiatuses and stuff. I don't, I don't really know what he wants. Like, get, he might just be like, "The hell with it. I'm here. I'm getting a paycheck." Like, like. Which is Samoa Joe's, um, got, got, like, that, that, that's his MO from what I've been reading in the locker room. Mm-hmm. He's just like, whatever, I'm here, I'm getting paid, whatever they want to do, I'm here to do it. All I gotta tell you, know? so, all I gotta tell you, I, I, I can, I don't know if you've been following this, this, uh, this, uh, Roman Reigns, uh, storyline with the, the mystery attacker, like, and Samoa Joe initially getting the blame for the first couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, I, I, I sense a Samoa Joe, uh, babyface turn coming. A what? I, 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 no, I sense a Samoa Joe babyface turn. Yeah, you know what? It's like, like, how do you do? See, that, that, that's the thing about these turns. Like, how do you uh, like baby faces get beat up? How is Samoa Joe gonna get beat up? Well, you know, he, he can like, be. That, that, that's what I'm saying. Roman Reigns. He, he, it's even hard to believe for Roman Reigns to get beat up. Let's be honest. It, it's just that he puts on the, the his whole, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the you know, like you know, uh, good, you know, I'm just here trying to prove my way. So people gotta feel bad for him a little bit. Mm-hmm. But Samoa Joe is a straight bully. 
You know, I, so I, I mean, I really don't know what to get, and it, it doesn't matter because fans like him anyway. Oh, I love him. It doesn't matter if he's my a heel or a face. Company. Fans love him. Mm-hmm, me too. I do. My favorite wrestler in the whole company. Um, I can see them kind of taking sort of the Kevin Owens sort of like trek. Like mm-hmm. Kevin Owens is still kind of a, he, and he's a face now. He does have heel tendencies, you know. Small jokers don't yeah. have that, you know. I guess. Nah, you know, nah, nah, you know what it is too about the difference between the Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens looks like a regular guy who watches wrestling. Yeah. So that's it's true. easy to root <laughs> for. That's a good point. No, really, and, and I've always said that about Kevin Owens. I, I, I think that's a big reason why it's working. He doesn't. I mean, he's not the most cut up guy. He's not. He's a great athlete and a phenomenal. Right? He's a great athlete. Absolutely. But he's not the most. Cut up, he looks like a guy who just drinks beers, eats pizza, and watches wrestling and runs a wrestling blog. He looks like, 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 like he's he he like. stone cold fat. So it's, I think I think that adds to the likability fact. Samoa Joe just looks like someone you walk on the opposite side of the street of at any time of the day. He's good on the mic too, man. He's another one of those guys that's great on the mic, great in the ring. Yep. yep. Hey, he's with yeah. the paycheck. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, this Goldberg's a good match. Um, um, hopefully, this could get Ziggler some heat. You know, obviously, because he's it's clearly he's a, he's, a, he's one he's one of the uh, you know his his character. You know, obviously, he's definitely a heel. But mm-hmm. even when he comes out now, when it's theme music, you know, he he gets no he gets no pop whatsoever, good or bad. Yeah. You know, it's that's so. always been his thing, though, man. He, even even when he was a good guy, a face, and people actually liked him, he just. It never quite. I just don't get it. Like, you know, like that. Like sometimes it's just some things you just don't get. Dolph Ziggler is one of those enigmas that nobody will ever understand. Look at this way: the, the Rock before he became the Rock, and he was a great athlete in the ring. He was he was he was disliked, and he got no pop whatsoever. So it happens. Nothing. It is what it is. All right, I'm actually looking forward to this match. I'll be honest with you: Sean Flair and Trish Stratus. Um, mm-hmm. I've never really been a big Trish Stratus person personally. Like, I understand her 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 history and and, and her being a legend and Hall of Famer and all that. I'll be honest with you, I'm rooting, I'm rooting heavy for, for Charlotte Flair winning this match. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I, I don't think I've ever rooted against Charlotte in any match. Right. I mean, even against girls I like, I think I always root for Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Um, and this goes back to what I said before about the Canada angle. I don't know how they're going to play this because Trish Stratus is a WWE Hall of Famer, mm-hmm. and 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 on top of that, she's a mom. She has the kids. Everybody knows that. Everybody. She's also like a uh, like an idol to girls in that age bracket because she does keep herself looking great. She she's a great, great mother. Has a happy family thing. So it's kind of it's kind of weird because Charlotte's just out here just saying, "Oh, I'm the best," you know, and 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 it is what it is. She kind of so is though. She kind of is the best though. I, I, it it kind of feels in a way. Um, what they're doing with Dolph, they're kind of doing with Charlotte, which is like, we have nothing for her, just put her against a legend. But Charlotte gets popped, though. That's the big difference. Charlotte still gets popped. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the, th- that's the thing. That's the tough thing about Charlotte, is that she deserves to be the main event in the women's every time, but it, it, it does get boring. Like, she deserves to fight for the belt every pay-per-view. I think also a- what they want to do is no. kind of, I, I think what's, what's going on here, because she's so great, I mm-hmm. think they want Becky to develop more as a champion in, in this reign right now she's doing. And then they'll probably go back to Flair and Becky going into maybe Survivor Series or even to Royal Rumble or, or, or WrestleMania next year. Separate them for a little <laughs> while and then bring them together again. Yeah, you know what I'm going to say about Becky? And I love Becky. Me too. I absolutely love Becky. I honestly think she peaked months ago. Um, like I, I, I don't see anything else Becky could do. Because in the ring, she's just average. Or even you could, you could even argue below average in the ring. In comparison, you know? to, wait, are you saying that in comparison to the talent on the roster now? Yeah, yeah. In comparison to any girl on the roster, she's pretty much average in the ring. Some of those girls the are only really thing good. that keeps them all at is mm-hmm. she's cooler and she works the mic better than about ninety five percent of them. And again, pop. Pop matters. She gets pop still. Yeah, and, pop. And, and 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 you know what matters too? I, I always joke about the music matters. The the, the uh, her her song comes on, everybody wants to sing along. Kids adore her, and 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 she's one of those people which is important for WWE right now. When it comes to this women's revolution, she's right on top. Like that that whole demand thing was not a mistake. You know, no. and, well, it was all planned out musically. It was all planned brilliantly. But. I, I don't know what else to do with Becky. Like honestly, like I, I, I think this beef with Nat is cool. I mean, I even think they could drag it on for another month if they really wanted to with Nat, because it, cause it, cause it go, only because Nat's a professional, you know. But um, but that, but they can't have Becky always fight Charlotte, you know. They they can't do it, you know. Like I, it seems like they took Alexa Bliss out of that 
running, and they kept her in the tag team runs, which which is fine with me, you know. But because uh, Alexa was always one of those that I thought got got a lot of slack, but she works great in the ring, you know. Right. I mean, and, and they did the same thing to Oscar. Like Oscar was the stud until Charlotte beat her, and that was it. That I was think, the end I, of Oscar. I think they're trying to develop more of the girls, and I, I, I think they're using this period now to develop, you know, the Bailey's, the Ember Moons. Um, you know, some of those girls, see if they can... Uh, I'm actually, I'm, I actually don't even care. I, I was never a fan of Bailey. Ever. Okay. I was never a fan of Bailey. I, I think she's terrible. I think she's corny on the mic. I think she's awkward in the ring. Oh, like, yeah, I think her whole gimmick... But, but the thing about her is that kids love her, so they can't get rid of her. Because her right. merchandise sells. Right. Um, I, like I, said, I, hope, I hope Charlotte wins this match, because I, I want Charlotte to get back to the top of the heap again at some point. So and, and, and it doesn't even matter. Like, like, the thing is with Charlotte, she could lose two matches in a row, let's say, right? Then she could show up in a triple threat match, steal the show, demand the number one ranking, and she'll get it. Like, like that, that's why it doesn't really matter. Like, Charlotte could drop this match, and it won't affect her whatsoever. Because her defense is, well, I was the only woman who came out. I was all, I, forget about Becky Lynch being a man. I was man enough to challenge Trish Stratus, yada, yada, yada. You know, I mean, all this nonsense. Like, she could always spin it. Yeah, that, that, shit, that, that, that she still won. Because right. she's great like that. She could still spin it. Right. Okay, we got uh, Bray Wyatt, the, fi- the Fiend. Is make his return against Finn Balor. Finn Balor, rather. Um, look, this Bray, this Bray Wyatt angle, I, I kind of like it. It's kind of cool. Um, the the whole like you know getting the ring, dark in the whole arena. You know, you know, good memo claw to Mick Foley, memo claw to Kurt Angle on Raw. You know, he got Finn Balor a month back on Raw with the with the uh, the move he does normally. I don't know, but I, I'm I'm afraid that with all this build up for Bray Wyatt, the in ring product is still meh. You know what I'm saying? And they're using this yeah. as a way to distract from that. At least at least some of the matches I've seen Bray Wyatt in the past. I've never been really been let's just say this way. I'm not saying he's not he's bad in the ring. I'm just saying he doesn't move the menial he doesn't move the menial for me personally in the ring. I mean I I I've always been a Bray Wyatt fan. Um I actually thought they did him wrong. So, uh, I, love like, the I, I, put, I love the characters. I I I thought he was great when he had the Wyatt family. Mm-hmm. You know, um I thought I thought that, that was great when he had the Wyatt family and then they ended that. Um and then he had to go away. He had gotten to trouble in the locker room, yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. But, um, no, I'm, I'm all for it. And I, I really think this is a good way, honestly, for them to, to, to kick off Bray Wyatt, get, give him a good win against a legitimate guy, and then give Finn some time off and reboot Finn because Finn's kind of lost in the shuffle right now. And he's a great athlete, and he's kind of lost in the shuffle. And I keep going back to put him with his boys. Um, but, yeah, but, 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 yeah, get that, just, just put him with the OC somehow. But, because I, I think if you add Finn to that faction, I think that faction is great already, though. See, mm-hmm. you add Finn to it, amazing, you know? And, 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 and plus, we would see Finn as a heel, which I think, I think it's time to see Finn as a heel at this point. So, yeah, I mean, if WWE is smart, they, 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 they have Bray Wyatt win in a, in a straight pinfall or, or even a tap out, whatever, just a straight win, like, like no cheating, no nonsense. And they, they push him, because I, I, I like Bray Wyatt. And you, you let Finn sit out a couple of months or a month and a half and then reboot him because he's kind of lost in the shuffle right now. Um, I saw somewhere about a couple weeks ago that Finn Balor re- uh, requested some time off. So I'm thinking maybe he loses his match to Bray, goes away for a little while, yeah. comes back, and then maybe that maybe that's the angle to bring the uh, the OC because, I mean, I mean the, right now the OC right now is holding three titles. So, you know, you have the, the, the Raw Tag Champions and you have the uh, U.S. Champion right now going to SummerSlam and AJ Styles. So I think that's a good yeah. way to uh, – they're, they're, they're already building a little faction now. You bring Finn Balor yeah. back in, probably say around. Well, I don't know how long this break will be. Probably into Survivor Series, maybe. I don't know. And then you get you get a force from there. I, I'm, I'm I'm with you. I, I think Bray wins this match. And I think Finn will go away for a little while and then come back and with the uh, with the club. Yeah, I, I, I think that would be a great way to put him in Survivor Series for that four way tag match that they yeah. do that they like doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that would be the best way to do it. I agree. I, I, and, and, and he would get a huge pop if he came out. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the LC is, is building, and it's, it's doing very well. All right, uh, speaking yeah. of the LC, AJ Styles against Ricochet for the U.S. Championship. Um, this is going to be the match of the night again because, again, these guys are just phenomenal in the ring. Um, I, I like that they may Ricochet lose to AJ Styles at Extreme Rules because I think as great as Ricochet is, and he's a good champion, obviously. Or was a good champion, should I say? Um, I do think that he need he needed some edge to his character, and you mm-hmm. can't get the edge to his character when he's the champion. I think when you're chasing the title, there's an opportunity to add more edge to the character. And I, I, I think you see Ricochet a little more edge to his character. He's still babyface, obviously, but it's a little more edge to him now than we've seen before um, winning the title against Samoa Joe a few months back. Yes, yeah, uh, I'm with you. Obviously, everybody's been saying it's going to be the match of the night. That's the easy call for the night. Yeah. Um, yes. 
Um, yeah, I'm with you. I'm, I'm actually glad that he lost the belt to AJ. And I, and you you kind of it's weird because AJ Styles is the kind of guy that he his whole thing, good or bad, works better with him with a belt. You know, it just works better when he has a title. AJ, mm-hmm. he's just that good, and no one's gonna argue it either. You know, so yeah, just put AJ on with a belt on him. Um, the other part of it is. Is um when, when it comes out, I actually think AJ is going to win. Me too. And I, and I, 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 it might not be a clean pinfall, but I think AJ wins this. Um, for the same reason, I think I, I, I even thought giving Ricochet the title, the USA title, was too quick. You know, I I, I understand he's popular and stuff, but like, you, you know what's weird about him? When he came out to rescue um New Day on Monday night, right? It was almost like something out of a superhero movie, right? His music played, he ran out, he's flying all over, he's destroying everybody. I, I was that. like, they're making his kid look like a superhero, because that's what he is, you know? He comes out, and he just has the look of a superhero, the kid. Good looking kid, he's always on the right side of things, he just wants to fight, just wants to prove himself, and he, and he does everything in the ring that's more impressive than anyone else in there. His mic skills are just really bad. You know, he, yeah. he's way too he's way too gung ho of wanting to get out there and prove a point. Um, I don't know what they're gonna do, but they're definitely gonna work with Ricochet because he's obviously one of the most talented people they have. Well, not only that, um, but also he's I one think of the most this, easily marketable guys too. Right, and this rivalry has more legs to it. You can this can go to Survivor Series, honestly. This, this, this can go to November. Yeah. It's, it's that good because people want to see this match. You know, this is yeah. one of those matches. This is yeah. one of those rivalries where, yeah, you see him four times already in the last two months. I'm not bored of it. I love it. <laughs> Bring it again. You know, so I can see Styles winning this again. Can have Ricochet continue chasing the title, put some more, um, some more, uh, you know, edge to him a little bit, work on his character, and then maybe wins the Survivor Series on another pay per view down the road. I can see that happening. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you. I mean, I love AJ. It took me a while to really get, get into AJ's oh, he's great, character. Man. Oh, he's a phenomenal. I, I love, I love his character. I love his character. Just his hair bothers me, man. Well, I mean, yeah, you, you know, you know. <laughs> the hair is just like weird, but like it's, it's, I love him more. Than, you know, the same thing would happen with me and Daniel Bryan, though. I never cared for Daniel Bryan when he went heel. I loved him, absolutely I, loved him. I like him yeah. heel, I, and I think he, they're the building the Roman Reigns Daniel Bryan uh, um, program next. Cause, yeah, I, I, I was going to ask you if you think it's Daniel Bryan hitting yeah, Roman Reigns. Yeah, the and, thing. I, I, and that's why I assumed I assumed that last week. I assumed that like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I assumed that last week, and and you know they said they saw they saw Rowan. <laughs> That's the rumor that they saw rolling at the uh, the accident. So I don't know. We'll see. But I think Dallin, I, I miss Dallin Bryan as a, as a solo uh, as a uh, singles wrestler. So we'll see. All right. Um, here's a, here's a, here's a big one. One of the big ones here. Shane McMahon, the best in the world, versus Kevin Owens. If, obviously, the stipulation is if Owens loses, he must quit the WWE. Um, look, I'm on those that says that I love Shane Man. I think he's a necessity to the company. I don't want him on both Raw and SmackDown and and being involved in every single fucking thing that goes on in the company. Um, yeah, he's useful, obviously, yes, and I love Shane, but just use him in a way where it's not overkill. Like I know Shane is used to put other guys over. Like Drew McIntyre has kind of sort of cooled off recently, so you put put him with Shane, maybe get some heat. I don't know, but this is kind of this is this is a poor man's Stone Cold of Vince uh, rivalry here, so some some degree. But I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. It seems like they try to start a Stone Cold Vince rivalry for everybody. Because they, they did that last year with uh, Stephanie and Becky Lynch. You remember? I don't, no, I don't remember. I didn't watch last year. <laughs> oh, okay. So they did that last year with Stephanie and Becky Lynch. And then they tried it on SmackDown right away with uh, Vince and Shane against um, Roman. And then that, and that, then obviously that, that Roman had to go away. But that, that they tried that with Roman. And that's always the angle now because it worked so well with Stone Cold. But... It's never going to work as well again, ever. You know, I, I well, like Kevin Owens a lot. You know, but it's just not the same. It's no, just, well, the attitude is not the same. And Kevin Owens is great on the mic too, mm-hmm. but it's just like Stone Cold is just completely different. There's a different aura about it. You know, no, so no, that, I mean, for but me, also, it, 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 mm-hmm. what happened? no, but also, so too. I was going to say, I kind of like the angle that that, it, it, that that Owens isn't really fighting for him; he's fighting for the purity of the company, kind of thing. Right. That's the one thing I will say that's actually kind of cool. Whereas Stone Cold is doing about him, you know what I mean? Kevin Owens is yeah. doing it for the, for, the, for the guys who don't get the recognition, and he's naming guys, too, in the process. The reason why you'll never get the Stone Cold Vince reaction is because once you do it the first time, you can't really, you can't really do it again. It's, 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 it's new. Um, number two, different eras. Uh, you had a longer leash in 1997, 98, 99, 2000, 2001. Attitude Era allowed you to cuss middle fingers and that. 
WWE today doesn't do that. They, they're, they're trying to stretch it a little bit more to some degree. Like they say the word ass a little more now on TV, but it, you know, they, they're not going to go so far. They, they go, they, they're only going to go so far in today's uh, wrestling. And yeah, they, the restrictions is it was why it will never be the way it was with Vince and, 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 and Stone Cold. Vince and Stone Cold didn't have the restrictions. They just went, went at it and whatever. Yeah, and, and, and you just said it. Like I, I was saying that nobody could be Stone Cold, and, and Shane is the closest thing to Vince, and he's still miles away from Vince. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Vince was naturally hated. Uh, and only that, we don't give enough credit yeah, to the Bret Hart shit. The match, I mean, obviously, I, I, I actually hope this is a quick match. I, and I know Shane is known to give the highlights. Or I actually hope it's a quick match because that only adds to the storyline of Kevin Owens saying that real wrestlers need the time. Mm-hmm. You know, like if Kevin Owens just kind of bludgeons Shane McMahon and it's over like in f- five, seven minutes, I, I would be happy with that. You know, because Shane McMahon, he will take the bumps. You know, he's not scared of taking the bumps. So you could get a lot out of a seven-minute beatdown of Shane McMahon. Of I'm kind of hoping to go that route. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you there. All right. SmackDown Women's Championship on the line. Bailey against Ember Moon. Kind of sort of looking for this match. Most of Ember Moon. I think she's really good in the ring. I, 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 is she ready to hold a title? I don't know. <laughs> but she's starting to get a little, you know, one thing I noticed with Ember Moon last month now, she's getting more and more pop. My issue with Ember Moon, once again, is the personality. I, I don't really know what the hell she's supposed to do or defined i don't get it you know i really don't get Emma in the ring yeah amazing talent you know she was trained by booker t like she's amazing you know in the ring but i don't get her whole gimmick and i, I don't think the fans do either you know and if the fans don't get you then it shows in the pop you know i think people are just happy for her to get the title shot you know because she is a worker and she's one of those one of those locker room people that grinds every night mm-hmm. but i mean i honestly think i honestly think that that i honestly think Bailey has to win this and I, and I, I Bailey Pye is the person I don't like. I like the least in all of WWE, the whole universe. I still think Bailey needs to win it because I don't think Ember should be the one with the title. Honestly, to be quite honest, I don't think Ember really deserves. I mean, I don't know how to say anyway, who does, yet, anything. Right. Seems to yeah, I just don't see it yet. You know, and, and like I said with Alexa Bliss, I don't really know who's deserving right now in the women's. And you know, be- because mm-hmm. and, and I think that's a good thing. Because Charlotte Flair is out the picture, they're able to like focus on more pitcher, on more people, you know. And so that, that's why I think it's good that they, they they gave it to a young up and comer like Ember and a veteran like Natty, you know, to to at least try to fight for the belts right now. Because after after these two, I mean, it's going to reset. It's going to go right back to Charlotte against one of them, you know. Because they, they they push Carmella out, and not for nothing. Um, oh man, I forgot her name right now. Who's that? Um, uh, J- um, the Uso's wife. Well, I don't know. Oh my God! I feel bad because I'm trying to make a point, saying that, <laughs> saying that that she deserves a shot. Uh, Naomi, sorry, Naomi. Okay. Naomi, 100 percent deserves a shot and deserves a run. Like I would put her above Ember Moon. I put her above a lot. Naomi, I think, needs at least a three or four month run, honestly, because uh, she's a worker in the ring. She can work with anybody, and the fans like her because she gets a good pop. You know, so I, I that, that's the one person I think deserves it. But when it comes to this match, I hope it's over quickly and Bailey wins. I, I think Bailey needs the title because if she loses this title, I think she should go She's fall irrelevant. into the who cares. The title yeah, makes I, is, is helping her at least get the opportunity to see. It the only thing that helps her, and let's be hundred percent off. Besides the marketability, because she she really markets to the kids, which is brilliant. You know, mm-hmm. aside from that, is that she's one of Charlotte Flair's people. Oh, she really? Yeah, like the the, the four horsewomen are Becky, Charlotte. Um, uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey, like that, the, 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 like those four, are the four horsewomen. You know, okay. which is why I, I, I never understood why they never just put them together as a stable. I never understood that. Well, my, you know? so, my soft spot for Bailey is because she's, she's a diehard Macho Man Reigns Heritage fan. That's my, that's my soft spot, and she kind of sort of like you know dedicates that you know the, the elbow drop and you know wearing the, uh, the, the you know the, the, the what she wears you know going to the ring with the the jacket with the, the, the strings and stuff. You know, so I I like that she respects the, the person that's lost in all this. Like I always bring up with you, and you say you've never seen a wrestle, but Sasha Banks is one of the best that they've had. I haven't seen and her. and I don't know her. what's going on with all is that she hurt? with Sasha. Banks. She's hurt because right? if she was around, you could throw her in every title picture. She's hurt, right? Huh? She's hurt, right? She's injured, right? Oh, uh, she's just pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> Well, just, uh, I, I, I think the reason they're trying to see what they have now with Ember and Bayley. So that's why you have this match. And, you know, it, it, it could be looked as a throwaway match, except as it's a title on the line. So, whatever. 
But this is what happens there. Okay, the other woman's title on the line on the Raw Women's Championship, uh, Becky Lynch and Natalia. Um, uh-huh. Now, I guess Natalia's been, been there for like, over 10 years now, and she's been kind of on the way down, really, I, I guess. That's, that's, that, I, I yeah, haven't seen I her mean, on TV until recently. She held the title for a little bit about two years ago, and I think uh, she dropped it to Charlotte. But she had the title for a little while. Um, you know, and she, she was a pretty good champ, I mean, for the most part. Yeah, I mean, that... that she didn't add as much um, power to the championship as Charlotte did, obviously. Mm-hmm. But um, she was pretty good champion, what it's worth. But, like, I mean, that, with her, she's one of those people. The, the lineage, the heart lineage is going to keep her always in the, involved in the mix. She's a great worker. Um, and in the locker room, all the girls love her, really. Like, you know, all the girls love her because she's just great with them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so it, it, it's pretty cool to see her and Becky go against, go at it. I really don't know what WWE is going to do here, though. Because, like I said, I... I, I I think it's worth it to chance to see if Becky can really survive without the belt again. I, I think WWE, I mean, if they want to roll the dice, Shock the they, can see, they can see if Becky, because Charlotte could definitely do it. She's doing it without the belt, you know. So they, 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 to add more validity to the women's ranks, if Becky could still make a run in popularity and have a different beef with, let's say, somebody else, and it doesn't involve the belt, then that'll do a lot for the women's division. But I don't think WWE is ready to do that. I think they fear to do that. I think what what I could see happening here is Natalia winning on Sunday in Toronto in her hometown, and then losing it tomorrow on Monday night back to Becky. <laughs> I hate when they do that. I hate that shit too. I hate, I that hate shit. when they do that, man. Because it's like you build up the pay per view beef to just. To, well, I say pay per view, but you know, pretty much everyone who watches has WWE Network, but whatever. Mm-hmm. You build up the pay per view beef to just give it away on free on Monday, you know. Right. Um, I mean, I, I, I remember when they, they did that with uh, Stone Cold and Kane when Stone Cold's first reign as champion, and then he lost to Kane in the uh, first blood match uh, at King of the Ring in '98, and he lost the title to Kane. And then the very next night on Raw, Stone Cold beat Kane again in a rematch. I'm not yeah. a fan of those personally, but whatever. I guess I can see it happening out of respect for the hometown thing. Um, but you're right. I, mean, I, I do want to see if Becky can hold it home. Like, as a, like, I don't know what they like. I the more I think about it, I think Trish is going to beat Charlotte just to satisfy that hometown crowd thing. You know, but I, I, that's why it's like I would, I would. It would be interesting to see what they in did the real with Becky. World, but Charlotte would crush I don't think they're going to have Becky lose, bro. In a, in a real world, Charlotte would crush Trish. Let's be real. If we're going to talk real world, Samoa Joe kind of beats the crap out of everybody. So does Braun Strowman and so does Drew McIntyre. Yeah. If we're going to talk about real world. That's true. <laughs> we're not in the world. <laughs> like, I hate seeing Drew McIntyre lose matches because I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, what, what, what is, you know, I thought they would do a Drew Taker program, but we're not, not going to get that, I guess. And he's the only yeah. one kind of floundering now. He has had Shane a couple weeks, and but, you know, it's kind of floundering. He's in, he's in this thing with uh, Cedric. Uh, what's his name? Cedric. Uh, uh, and I'm losing to Cedric. And, yeah. you know. And, and th- 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 this is what I was telling you. Like, I don't know why WWE, th- they don't really have a strong, they're making all their heels lose. And it's like, I mean, it, it, even if your heel has to cheat to win, they should still do that. Triple H was great at cheating to win, you know? You know, like, you know, you know what the I, problem is, bro? You know, you, know, you know what the problem is? There's too much talent in this roster. Too much talent. Yeah, but it's like, but the heels are talented too, though. Like, you've got to give them some W's. Yeah. You know, you've got to give your heels W's or else it just turns to Disney World. Right. You know? I mean, that, the only heel that they gave the W to, and you, and, and they totally went heel with him, was Brock Lesnar, you know? Yeah, we'll get there in a second. So, like, we'll, we'll get there. And, and I, I don't know. It's like, because Drew McIntyre is one of those guys that he should never really lose, you know? He should Ever. be. Dude, so, even The Rock last week gave, gave him the, the biggest comment in the world, telling him that he, that he should be the next guy. He has a look. Yeah. But, yeah Drew McIntyre, Drew McIntyre is a beast. I love him. Like, all out beast, man. I mean, but but but, and and he connects with the fans too, because the fans like the fans boo him, but they like him. Mm-hmm. You know, he's one of those guys. So I don't understand what they're doing with Drew McIntyre. Um, and and I really hope that I really hope that they don't do that piss poor angle of oh, you know, I'm getting away from Shane. They turn him face, and, and then you have a big guy again beat up by like Shane's cronies. I hate that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I mean, he has to stay a heel, but just give him some legitimacy, man. Right. And okay. that, that, remember that they ruined Bobby Lashley like that. You know, like Bobby Lashley's the most physically imposing guy on the roster, and and, and then like they blew it for Braun Strowman when they turned Braun Strowman face. They totally blew it for Braun Strowman. Right. Okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and he's not even on the card this month, and on the, on the, on the SummerSlam card. So, all right. Uh, here we go. The championship uh, matches. Uh, first one, the WWE Championship on the line: Kofi Kingston and Randy Orton. I'm only now learning the history of these two. 
This goes 10 <laughs> years. This is like 10 years of making. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I mean, I, I like Randy Orton. Um, I think Kobe's going to win, though. I think Kobe, they're building Kofi the next guy. I, I mean, Kofi is getting a lot of he's, he gets pop obviously him in New Day and I I just don't see how you can at this point if you're trying to build superstars if I mean if, assuming that's what they're trying to do here Kobe can't lose this early yet I mean I can see him maybe going to Survivor Series losing Survivor Series but you you, you could probably get a program out of these two for another a, a good, good few months and I don't know I I I, I like coffee in this coffee in this match I, I don't know I I can't. I don't see Randy win this match as much as I think he probably should, but I don't see it. You see, like, uh, my, my whole thing was, is with Kofi, and I've said this to people before, Kofi Kingston brings a lot more to the table than just uh, an underdog title run. Mm-hmm. It's He's so positive. He's child-friendly. Black. You know? Um, and a, another one, a good, good-looking guy. And like, great you in know, the ring, too. Great in the ring. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, amazing. Always, he's always been amazing in the ring. That's right. the whole thing. Like he's always been amazing in the ring. So it's like it's gonna be really tough to push that. Cause he's the kind of guy that if he loses, kids are gonna cry. You know, yeah. like little kids are gonna cry if he loses the belt because he's gonna probably cry in the ring. But Randy Orton, I've been saying for about two years, he deserves another title run. He deserves a legit title run, and I think this is a prime person to take it from, because and, and I love the way he's playing playing the heel role in this. I don't even know if he's a heel because he gets so much... He he, people love him, you know, so I don't even know if he's a you heel. You could! Really, you know? But you, and we'll discuss in a second, I mean, depending on how Brock Lesnar's schedule will go next month or so, a couple months or so, you could technically shift him to Seth Rollins at some point. Yeah, but, 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 Seth, what, needs the, Seth needs the juice more than else. Like, that, 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 that's why, like, I what I'd rather have is it, 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 it is is Randy Orton win. Let him go on a run until Survivor Series or something, you know. And then and then like 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 have Kofi kind of like have Kofi and then AJ Styles ricochet mix, you know. You could do that because that because because that would be uh-huh. entertaining as all hell. You know, you could do that, but, and, and he still won't lose his edge, really. And then eventually, if the fans really want it, you could put him back in the championship picture. It's really easy, you know. But mm-hmm. at this point, like, I don't want to see Randy Orton lose to Kofi Kingston, though. I really don't. No, right. And as you're saying, I mean, it's hard to look at it that way. Um, but I think of the two champions, who needs the most juice right now? Seth does. I mean, the fact that going back to Brock oh, yeah. again, <laughs> you know, means that Kofi's having a successful championship reign. Seth is not. That's a fact. That they, so far they've used his real life girlfriend, which, which failed in my opinion. Was one of the dumbest angles they've done. You know, with having Becky involved, and they were horrible together on on, on screen. You know, yeah. And now they're going to Brock. The, the you know the WrestleMania angle again. You know, go, going back to Brock and to get juice on the Seth's reign. His reign as champion since WrestleMania has not been interesting. Kofi, meanwhile, has had some great matches. You can say you at least say it's been interesting. Samoa Joe, Dolph Ziggler. Uh, you know. It's been interesting. So I think Seth needs to juice, not not Kofi. Yeah, I, think, I mean, maybe, maybe Orton that. Like, maybe Orton as great as Seth is, in ring and talent wise, or whatever, he he he's not that face of the company kind of guy. Who, Seth. Me. Um, Seth. And yet, that's what. And you say that, and yet, that's what they're trying to do right now. Like currently, you yeah, can, you can argue that I, Seth I, is, I is, is the um, prototype. Yeah, I, I don't see it like. Um, like I, I, I still, even though I don't like Roman as the face, I still see Roman as a better face of the company than him. You know, I do too. And it's like I don't know, like there's something lacking there. But I like the beef with him and Brock, and I, I thought the bumps he took against Brock um, last week were amazing. Oh, me against too. The Chick- loved it. I, I loved it. That, like that was amazing stuff that he was doing. Um, well, whether now, so we'll discuss it now. What well, New Championship, Brock Lesnar, and Seth Rollins. I'll tell you right now. I, I, I made no. I said on Twitter yesterday. I am rooting for for Brock. I, I don't give a so shit. So much. Oh my, because let me tell you, say what you want about Brock Lesnar, he's a great heel. Phenomenal heel. He's a great you know, heel. You know what makes a great heel? When, when they're almost indestructible. Mm-hmm. You know, like, like, remember when Andre the Giant was a heel? I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that. You know, like, I, but that's always the greatest thing, though. Like, I'm trying to think of, like, with King Kong Bundy, like, these guys were just, like, indestructible. You know, uh, the, the Undertaker was pretty much a heel, but he had a lot of fan base. You know, Undertaker was a heel, but you couldn't do anything to him. You know, Kane couldn't do anything to him. 
You know, and, and th- that's why Brock Lesnar is the only guy that they kind of build that with. Because, uh, like we said, with the McIntyres or anybody else, they fail at it. So people complain about Brock, you know, taking time off. They even have, like, the announcers, on, you know, shoot away on that whole thing about Brock not being being a part-time champion because he's not there every day, every night, whatever. I'm, I'm going to go the other way. I actually like that Brock's not there all the time. Because if Brock is there all the time, it takes away from the aura. Of course. And, 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 and honestly, it doesn't even matter if he's there. Because Paul Heyman does a little talking anyway, and Paul Heyman shows up every week, and he's great. Yeah. So it, it's like, it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I would love if, I mean, you know, you and me always have this discussion about bringing stables back. I just love stables. I me think too. it's one of them. I, 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 I love the Heenan family, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. The, Hart, the Hart family, like mm-hmm. all that all that stuff. I love all the stables. You know, and, and, and considering how good on the mic Paul Heyman is, like, he, he could be the advocate for a bunch of other guys who are terrible on the mic but great in the ring, and he could carry it. You know? I agree. Like, like I, I always said, like I wanted him. Like that, that, there were rumors that he was gonna that they were gonna turn Ronda heel and have him be her advocate, which would have been great because she was awful on the mic. You know? Yeah. The, the, um, the reason why fans turned against her was because she was awful on the mic. I wonder if they can. You know, I had an idea too. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure this will work, but if let's say you know talking about stables, let's say the um, Heyman decided to go that route. I could see, you know, obviously Brock would be one of those advocates. Why not put Drew McIntyre there next next to him? But, but Drew actually is, isn't bad on the mic. No, no, no. It, has, it doesn't do with being on the mic. It's more to do with, with, with the exposure and putting the character over in a way where, because Paul Heyman is the fucking man. You yeah. put him on anybody, he's going to make, he's gonna, he's gonna, you, you grab interesting immediately. McIntyre is floundering. Put him with, put him with, with Heyman. You know, and he'll be the he'll, he'll, and he'll be the guy when Brock's not there. He'll be the guy to fill in. That, that somebody else that they messed up with by turning him heel was um, Elias. Yeah, because the fans just started liking him because he was he was one of those annoying guys with the cliches, and fans just want to sing along with them or whatever. Like they even had him stop doing that WWE means walk with Elias. Like people love that. Mm-hmm. But, but, like I don't know why they stopped that. Like when the fans choose who they want, listen to them. I never understood why WWE goes against the grain. Because the Vince fans, is, Vince is, is the this, fans this is did not want Roman Reigns. This is something Vince ever. has been doing for years, going back to the eighties. And, and it's so, it's so what a, like Elias was becoming a fan favorite. Like and he wasn't. So, it was all an accident. He was the most unlikely of fan favorites. You know. Even I thought I like him. I was like, this is hilarious that the fans just like him now. You know. And, and it, it, that's the same thing that genuinely happens with Kevin Owens, you know? It, 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 even when he's a heel, it genuinely happens. They just gravitate towards guys because fans, at the end of the day, you can say whatever you want about wrestling fans. They're ignorant. They're, they're, they're nose pickers, whatever. They are loyal to the people that, that, that they see in the ring working their ass off every night unless you're Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> right, that's true. Hey, question. That's, the, that's why I never got the Dolph Ziggler hate. I right. didn't get it. I, honestly, it might just be because he, he reminded people of Shawn Michaels. Yeah, but he has his own thing going too, though. He's not like totally HBK. He's HBK. I don't know. When he was a good guy, he was kind of annoying. But then when he was a heel, I was like, all right, this is it for him. Like, this is great. But you know, that, I love him as a heel. And the then fact it's he's just, getting zero pop as a heel either is, is pretty bad, though. I mean, that that's yeah, saying a I lot. Mean, for God of his talent, and especially when he's going after he's kicking HBK in the head. Nobody cares. You know, it, it's, it, it's almost like Baron Corbin. It's a Baron Corbin was getting booed, booed, and it was great. He got heat, you know? He got a lot of heat. And he was, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, like, he's been gone Corbin since... Uh, was, and, 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 and now with the new writers, they took him off. They just don't do anything with... And Baron Corbin, I honestly think, was the most underappreciated guy on the roster. Him and Andrade, right now, are two of the most underappreciated guys on the roster because Andrade puts on matches with anybody. Yeah, Baron... You, you Baron, put Andrade in a match with anybody, mm-hmm. when it comes down to strength, agility, anything, he's amazing, Andrade. You, but you, they don't know what to do with him. You mean Mr. Charlotte Flair, of course, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Charlotte Flair. Good for him on that. They must have, they must have great sex, I'm sure. I don't, I'm not talking about Andrade. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is that, that that's a lot of strength in one bedroom. Because <laughs> Andrade's a big dude. Andrade's <laughs> a big dude, man. Um, but yeah, but like... Baron Corbin, I, I you see me on Twitter all the time. I'm like, yo, y'all hating on Baron Corbin. He's the best heel in the company, you know. And he's the best heel in the company, and he puts on a good match with anybody. 
I just don't get it. Like, and I, and, I, and that, from what I read, they're putting Baron Corbin on the shelf right now, and they're going to see what they can do with him. But wow. I don't know. I, I thought him as the super heel was the best thing they had going. He got pop. He got a lot of heat. He did. I don't. I don't get. I don't know what WWE does. Nobody ever understands. So, um, this. I mean, this Seth Rollins Brock Lesnar Les- Les- match can't. It, it it can be a clean finish. I think if Brock loses, it takes a shine off of Brock again. You, you lose Seth twice in four months. I can't see yeah, that happening. Yeah, that happening. But yet, Seth's gotten beat up so much in the last few the last few weeks that Wait. Seth loses a match too on top of that. Yeah, that 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 that, 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 that this is why I think it's great. You can still have Seth lose straight up because everyone's gonna say Brock Lesnar beat the crap out of him a week before, which he did. He legitimately threw the guy on his ribs onto a chair. <laughs> like, reason, three or four times. I'm not a Seth guy, like, you know, mainly, so, mainly, mainly because of the fact that. He started calling folks out, talking on Twitter a couple weeks ago, talking about the you know you know this and that. Well, we're we're the best WWE, and he's where it's at, and blah blah blah, and you know money and all this stuff. I'm like, stop, dude! Don't be that fucking guy. You're, you're at the top of the game. Don't you? You have to stoop that level. So I I, I kind of lost I kind of saw lost lost respect from him a little bit after he did all that whole like, Twitter uh, I could, beef shit. Like I like I got from what I hear, Seth Rollins isn't like the nice nicest person, you know? Right. Oh, uh, that's from what I hear. He's just. He's cool with his friends, and that's it. You know, like he's, he's not one of those guys, like a locker room guy. He's you what? Know, he's he's used, cool with Rain, Roman, he used, and, so to speak, but not anymore. Huh? You know, but whatever the case is, like that—that's that, all hearsay. So whatever, don't take my word for it. I'm right. not in there. But yeah, it's like, like I told you before, I think something's lacking with with Seth. And if they want to do this all over again, they can because they could always fall back on the angle of Brock Lesnar kind of cheated this win. You know, I and mean, yeah, I'd much rather see Brock. I mean, is uh-huh. Brock gonna hang around for a little while and keep the title on him a little while? You know, I don't, I don't see a problem with that. I can see a Brock, Randy Orton program coming. I, I don't know. I can see a lot yeah, of things I, on top. I don't see a Brock Randy Orton promo at all. Like, because Brock only works well against the real, real faces. Randy Orton's kind of like a loner. Like that's the true. fans that, that like him. Point. You know, like Randy Orton's just a lo- fans just like him. He's the coolest fucking guy in the room. I mean, let's be honest. Like, yeah. <laughs> Randy Orton comes out, he says something real slick, really obnoxious, fans laugh, and they wait for the RKO. Like, he's just the coolest guy in the room, Randy Orton, and he has a great resume. It's not like it's not like 15 years ago when, when he was a young, upstart, good-looking kid, and people wanted to root for him. It's totally different why they root for him. It's a matter of respect, and he's the coolest guy in the room. Like, Brock Lesnar, it only works when he's the bully. Right. And you, no one's bullying Randy Orton. No, you I, know? Agree. I agree with but, that. It can only work with a real face, which is why it'll work. It could work with Seth Rollins for another month. I mean, it really could. You know, it, it, it could work with Seth for another month, and, and after that, he can move on. I mean, Brock. I'm saying, not Seth. But he can move on to whatever the, the newest face is. If anything, if anything, because Brock Lesnar does whatever the hell he wants, Raw or SmackDown, he could go right to Kofi, and, and maybe maybe that's how Kofi loses. That's true. And, and you know, like him. he, he can build Brock a Kofi Brock program in Survivor Series. Whatever he wants, WWE. Yeah, and you can, can build a Kofi Brock program in Survivor Series. Exactly. You know, like, which is something they might do. Because Brock, Brock is, I think it's in his contract that he has to fight for the belt. Or it has to be a real big match, you know? <laughs> Goldberg? <laughs> Joking. God, no. no, I don't want to see that shit again. We'll see that shit again. I, I'm really upset we got to watch Goldberg again. Uh, we'll see. He's, he's in great shape, though. We'll say that. Yeah, but he was never, like, the great in-ring guy anyway. Well, let's see. What Maybe Ziggler can get it out of him. We'll see. I mean, take your Goldberg's a bad combo. <laughs> Ziggler right can time. get something out of him. I think Ziggler can get something out of Goldberg a little bit. I don't know. But and and this is where Ziggler once again is great because Ziggler can carry the match. You know. Maybe we like, can appre- Maybe you know what? After this match, I think maybe time for you and I to start building some appreciation hashtags for both Ziggler on fucking Twitter. You know. It, it doesn't work. I, I I tried that with with. With Baron Corbin, and everybody laughed me out, out the well, fucking you know, you know what it is? It was Corbin, though, that fucking Applebee's outfit he wears all the time. It's hard, hard to be taken seriously, like to be honest it. with you. I like I it, personally. I, know, I like it. I like it. I but people don't. Right. What happened? I like it. I, I love the outfit. It was great. Yeah, so did I. Yeah, so I didn't mind it. It showed that he was like a prick, and he was like above everybody. Like, I thought his whole gimmick was great. He was just an obnoxious creep who just didn't want to listen to anybody like you know i just thought it was a great gimmick and right. you know it was, he 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 pretty much brought up remember i told you about my people like kevin owens he looks like everybody else yeah. like and 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 baron corbin is pretty much like the young boss that you got to work for that's a real hot shit you know right. <laughs> like he's like the young boss who's like, like he's 20 years younger than you and he's your boss and you gotta listen to him you just don't like him right 
All right, before you, yeah, no. before, before you go, um, we lost one one of the truly one of the all time greats last week. Holly Race uh, passed away at age seventy six. Um, now I wasn't look I. I didn't watch any any NWA stuff that he did way back when. Obviously, I did remember watching a lot of the you know his WWE stuff between eighty six, eighty seven, and eighty eight, and then he left in in ninety. He retired, um, but he I, I've heard some stories about about Harley Race. Some really cool stories. He was a scary mother. He was a real motherfucker. He was a scary motherfucker, dude. I, I remember Hogan telling stories about, about Harley Race. You know, way back when, and you know some of the off off screen stuff that. He was somebody you did, you, did, you did not fuck with. He was he had no problem getting your face and even bringing a gun one time to a to a taping to a, a show a show taping, for, for, you know some shit like that. But he was a one of the all time greats, man. I mean, I mean his, his matches with Flair back in the early eighties, you know, holds up still. Dusty Rhodes and all that. I mean, he was one of the all time greats. It was it's just sad I was able to get get the great race because when he came to WWE, he was already past his prime and all that. Yeah, I mean, I remember him. I mean, like, I was never, I was never one of those guys who watched the other wrestling except for WWE when I was younger. And um, for me, I remember him as King Harley Race yep. in that whole run. And and it was just, it was funny because I always saw him as the old man wrestling as King Harley Race. Yeah. But he always won. And it was like, it, it, he was one of those guys. He was old school. He just knew the grappling holds. He like a Bob Backlund kind of guy, you know? Mm-hmm. He knew all the, the grappling holds and everything. And then he had that, that headbutt that he would just drop his whole body I'm on him. Annoying as shit, dude. Yeah, like it was all, it was all like old school stuff that he did. So yeah. and 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 when you listen to the to, to the things like Ric Flair said, like you know all the guys from back in the day who wrestled with him, you know that they, they all said he was just a general tough guy. That's what they all said. Like like you said, like he's just he was just a tough guy, but everyone respected him. So yeah, that the table shot he did with Hogan on the uh, March eighty eight version of Sign Up Main Event. Still, I mean, for him to do that table spot, you know, put the table in half and then. Pretty much, pretty much ended his career, to be honest with you. Yeah. But for him to do that, that, that spot was pretty sick. But yeah, he, he, he missed, obviously. He was one of the all-time greats. So, anyway, G, anything going on before you let you go? Uh, besides the birth of the kid happening any day now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How's she feeling? That. How's she feeling? She like ready, she's ready, ready for the eviction? She's fine. She goes to the gym every day. My wife, like, she don't, you know, she don't really let it bother. Nice. <laughs> Her belly's big, too. But, like, she don't let it bother. She goes to the gym every day, does what she has to do. Nice. Um, nice. And, uh, Beers yeah, other than that, I got, I don't know when, depending on when this kick comes out, but the Beating Vegas podcast will be back out on the Brawl Network, my network, the Brawl Network. <laughs> you know, so look out for that. All about college betting, so if you're into that, listen up. Are you doing only college this year? No, no pros? Yeah, I mean, I might do like one pro, pro pick a week, but I'm just really sticking to the college. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, that, if, I already talk enough pro doing the Bears Brawl, you yeah. know. I got uh, every week, and and pretty much with football season, I hop on podcasts anyway, talk football. So why do I have to do like NFL? Mine, of course, like, like this one, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 this one's just about college. What I want to do, so whatever, it's cool. Well, which, by the way, you know, like t- t- I mean, you, through the years, you you do better in college anyway, betting wise, make money. So a lot better. I know, <laughs> I'm <very> close. <laughs> the, the NFL is a damn trap, man. Yeah. <laughs> It is a trap. I mean, I mean, I mean, I may start doing this year. Doing it's funny, I tell everybody in the NFL about like about seventy five percent of the games come down to a field goal, and then I go and I'll bet. I'm like, why am I taking a nine point favorite? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, even the so even the pass lets you down. Even the Patriots let you down. Yeah, everybody. It's the dumbest thing, man. It's, I I hate that. I hate betting the NFL. It's the absolute hardest thing. College, yeah, yeah, you'll get some bad beats because that's just the way the world is. Yeah. But in college, if you do the right numbers, you know, you'll be in better shape than pro. You could crunch every number in the pros. It doesn't matter. Right, right. All right, G. Thank you so much as always, man. We'll talk in soon. Nah, man. I appreciate it, man. We got so more wrestling. It was fun. Hell yeah, man. Take care, bud. All right, be good. All right, later. Thank you.